This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship this weekend on the 15th Sunday of a Pentecost season. I'm Pastor Carrie Williamson coming from to you from St. Andrew Lutheran Church in Phoenix, Arizona. It's great to welcome you here to worship with us this weekend. This weekend is a big weekend here for our community. Uh, this weekend on the 13th Sunday, um, the 13th, we will have our drive-in worship service. All are welcome to come to that. Worship begins at 8.30. A part of our worship service will be a blessing uh, for the new school year for students, teachers, parents, faculty, staff, all those that are involved with schools. We'll also be collecting uh, donations for fill the food pantries um, at our the Choya Middle School and Lakeview Elementary School. So come and be a part of this day coming up. And Sunday School in a Box will also start um, on Sunday the 13th. As we enter into this time of worship, may this time of worship be a blessing to each and every one of you. Come, let us worship. We join together in the call to worship. Watch and listen for the wonders of God. God is among us. Watch and listen for the goodness of God. God moves among us. Watch and listen for God is here. God dwells among us. Amen. We light our candles and say these words of promise. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Amen. We join together in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of Almighty God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed by your grace. Forgive us through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God, through Christ Jesus, with whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Now let us share that peace with one another. Here in this place the new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space our fears and our dreamings Brought here to you in the light of this day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of our name We are the young, our lives are a mystery We are the old who yearn for your face We have been sung throughout all of history Called to be light to the whole human race Gather us in the rich and the haughty Gather us in the proud and the strong Give us a heart so meek and so lonely Give us the courage to enter the song here we will take the wine and the water Here we will take the bread of new birth Here you shall call your sons and your daughters Call us anew to be salt for the earth Give us to drink the wine of compassion Give us to eat the bread that is you Nourish us well and teach us to fashion Lives that are holy and hearts that are true Not in the dark the buildings confining Not in some heaven light is away here in this place the no light is shining Now is the kingdom and now is the day Gather us in and hold us forever Gather us in and make us your own Gather us in all peoples together Fire of love in our flesh and our bones O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. 
and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Here ends the reading. The Gospel according to Matthew. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but... I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you've had a great week and that you've been able to get outside in this beautiful weather this week. What has been your favorite activity outside this week? Um, I'd love to hear. You know, I was thinking um, this week about a notebook. Do you guys carry notebooks with you and a pen or pencil? What do you put in your notebooks? I always carry a notebook with me, it seems, and I'll write things down so I remember. I'll write down people's names, their contact information. I'll take notes in meetings. I'm constantly writing in my notebook. How about you? Do you write in your notebook a lot? Does it help you remember things? Well, I was thinking about notebooks today as I was thinking about our gospel from the gospel of Matthew. Uh, Matthew 18, and Peter asks Jesus this question, this kind of big question about this big word, 
forgiveness. How many times do we need to forgive? Peter asked Jesus. Now, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is you saying you're sorry to someone. And you hear someone say, I forgive you. Or you say you forgive you forgive them to someone else. It's kind of like wiping the scrape slate clean, like with your eraser from your pen or your pencil. It erases it clean. When you're in that relationship with someone, when someone has done something and you say, I'm sorry, and they say, For, I forgive you, or you say, I forgive you. It's kind of like taking a page out of the notebook and kind of throwing it away. It's forgotten. That's how, how God in Christ Jesus looks at forgive, forgiveness. Every week we confess those things that we have done wrong. And we hear these great words of love, of grace, and of hope. Your sins are forgiven. God takes that page and just throws it out the window and wipes, wipes it clean. Now, sometimes forgiveness can be pretty hard. It can be pretty messy. But yet, Jesus calls us to be workers in that gift of forgiveness, in that reconciliation of bringing people back together, of bringing people back, say, I'm sorry, and I forgive you. So today... I would love for you to think about forgiveness and what that means in your life and how you have been forgiven and how you have forgiven others. May God bless you and keep you and may you know that you are so loved and that God loves you. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our living and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thanks for gathering us in this digital space this day. Lord, may our hearts and minds be open to your spirit this day. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want to let you in on something that I'm so grateful for that happened this week. It was Tuesday afternoon. I had just got done with two Zoom Bible studies. I took my dog out for a walk, and I noticed how glorious the temperatures were. I also noticed how cloudy it was. Part of it was our clouds, but part of it was the cloudiness from the smokes, from the fires out in California and on the West Coast. But I made that decision right away. I made the decision to hop in my car and head to my sister's neighborhood and to go for a walk. I was so excited. It was such a gift. It was such a gift to be out in the beautiful weather and enjoying God's creation and the lovely temperatures. As I walked around my sister's neighborhood, I noticed a couple of things. The first thing I noticed that it was trash and recycling day as many folks had their trash can and the recycling bins out at the end of their driveway. I also knew it was the time of the year that people were trimming and pruning their trees and that was all that that debris was brought to the end of the driveways. And I noticed at one home they had tons of cardboard boxes at the end of the driveway. I made the assumption that those folks had just moved into their home and they were getting rid of the boxes. As I walked around the neighborhood, I saw another sign. There's a couple homes that had a sign that said, I'm a proud parent of, and they named the school where their son or daughter was a student at. As I continued on my walk that afternoon, I got deep in thought of the folks that lived behind those doors in those homes. I prayed for those homes as I walked by. I prayed for those who lived in those homes for their health and for their safety. 
I prayed for the students and the parents who are navigating this academic year. I prayed for the individuals in those homes that they would be held in God's care, love, strength, and hope during these days. As I got back from my walk and had an opportunity to, to reflect, I was grateful. I was grateful for the opportunity to be out in God's creation. I was grateful to hold in prayer the neighborhood and the people as I walked by their house. It was very good to do something different, something intentional on my walk on Tuesday afternoon. As I continue to reflect about that walk, I continue to think about those trash cans and about those recycling um, bins that I saw. Some of them were so neat, and others of them, the top was half off, and things were kind of coming out of them. They were overflowing with stuff. And I think about the home where I saw those cardboard boxes at the end of the driveway and the tradi transition that that household was in. I was reminded as I think about all of that, about the journeys of our lives and how sometimes things are so neat and tidy and other times things are so messy, difficult. And there are times, yes, that they're even in transition. A couple of words that keep coming to mind as I think about that walk are thankful, ordinary, messy, and transition. All four of those words help describe, and they really do tell our story of this journey of life. As I sit with that reflection on my walk on Tuesday afternoon, and I sit with our gospel text for this day, I am challenged again by Jesus' words to Peter and the parable that is set before us this day. Peter, as Peter does, just couldn't wait, and he asked Jesus this question, how often shall I forgive another? And Jesus says, not seven, but 70 times seven. As I hear Peter's question, and I hear Jesus' answer, all those words come to mind as I think about my walk on Tuesday, and more importantly, as I think about that word forgiveness. And in our text, in our gospel this day, we only get a snapshot of that word forgiveness. And so as I think about that word forgiveness, I think about thankful for the work of forgiveness. There are times that the work of forgiveness can seem very ordinary. There are times that the work of forgiveness, and I think probably more often than not, the work of forgiveness is messy and difficult. And the work of forgiveness does bring transition, healing, renewal, and reconciliation, and hope and life, not only for ourselves, but also for our relationships. I also think about that word forgiveness, and I realize just as you may be now thinking about that word forgiveness, it is so very personal. It is also so very communal. And the work of forgiveness is ongoing. It's not a once and done. It is ongoing. Let us hear Peter's question again. How often should I forgive? Jesus' answer really does not answer Peter's question, but I think Jesus' answer maybe points to maybe the confusion or the misdirection that Peter's question asking about forgiveness and maybe the misdirection and misunderstanding that we have of forgiveness sometimes. Peter's question, and maybe our own thoughts about forgiveness, sometimes we can see forgiveness as a business transaction. It's almost like it's just one more thing to check off the list. 
And, and when we get to seven, we don't have to think about it anymore. It's almost like you can put forgiveness on an app on our phone that you can download and it keeps track of all of those things. I don't think Peter's question gets to the heart of the matter about forgiveness. And I think Jesus' answer to Peter's question points us to the heart of the matter about forgiveness. Again, in our gospel that we have this day, this is just a snapshot of forgiveness. The heart of the matter in this snapshot of forgiveness is not how much or how often we ask our forgiveness or that we should forgive. The heart of the matter today is that the work of forgiveness is a part of all of our relationships. The work of forgiveness is a part of all of our communities. And the work of forgiveness is ongoing. Forgiveness is never not present in our lives, in our relationships, and in the life of all of the communities that we are a part of. It is constant, and it is working in our daily lives. The work of forgiveness is life-giving to our relationships. It is life-giving to us personally, and it is life-giving to our communities. It is life-giving to the world. And yes, this snapshot of forgiveness, it holds everything together. It holds relationships together. The work of forgiveness moves us forward and keeps the past from moving into the present. So as we sit with Peter's words and Jesus' words, it doesn't give us permission it does, I should say, it does give us permission to sit with our own stories of forgiveness, our own journeys of forgiveness, and the journeys of our communal journeys of forgiveness. It gives us permission this day to sit with those stories. It gives us permission to sit with the knowledge that forgiveness is work. It is hard. It is messy. It is a gift, it is an action, and it is a commitment to move forward. The work of forgiveness reminds us that the past will not have control over the future or the present, and that the work of forgiveness is life-giving. We are also given permission to sit with that word forgiveness and our stories of forgiveness, and to say that forgiveness is messy, and it is hard, and it is deeply personal. And I think Jesus knew that as he was talking with Peter, that it is hard, it is messy, but on the other hand, it can bring life, and it can bring hope. As we sit with all of this, we do not sit alone. We hear these words that we've heard many times in our worship services. As in a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of sins. Your sins are forgiven. That is a promise. That is a promise that God gives to us. God is in the business of forgiving and loving. God is in the business of working and renewing our lives in forgiveness that we receive as a gift from God. God is also in the business of working and renewing our relationship with the work of forgiveness and reconciliation for the sake of our relationships and for the sake of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
drunk together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayers. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all of our neighbors. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayers. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Give the leaders patience and wisdom. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayers. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. Be with those that we name in our hearts this day and on our prayer chain. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously, Graciously hear our prayers. God, our peace and our strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to health care workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how to best prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Your steadfast love is everlasting. Graciously hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.